the blood of Jesus take away by the sin take away by the curse take away by the reproach take away by the burden break every the chain there is a power in the blood in the power of the Holy Spirit we call the blood of Jesus we call the blood of Jesus upon our families upon our children upon our businesses upon our education upon our career upon our marriages we call the blood of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit let the blood of Jesus speak on our behalf speak for us oh God speak for the church oh God speak for the small oh God speak for the weak oh God speak for the women oh God speak for the men oh God speak for the children oh God in the power of the Holy Spirit we come against over the altar altars of Islam altars of witchcraft altars of sorcery altars of divination by the power of the Holy Spirit we render them powerless we break them down we declare them down we declare them down we declare them down every altar holding this nation every altar confusing the church the altar of immorality the oath of immorality, the spells of immorality, which has cooled down, which have put down men and women of God in this nation. That altar, that altar, we break your power, we break your power. The marine spirit, we come against you. You woman who sits on many waters and you have committed adultery with the men of God, with the kings and the princes of God, we render you powerless. In Kampala, in Uganda, in every corner of this nation, in the churches, the younger men who are in pornography, who are on smartphone, sucking for pornography, that spirit of pornography, of immorality, of riba sakataya baba. We render you powerless. We break your power. We break your power. You are killing a generation. Pornography, homosexuality. Religionism in this nation, we break your power. Those altars from America, from Europe, from Asia, from Africa, from the altars of the devil, from high places, we render your powerless. We render your powerless by the power of the Holy Spirit. Every confusion, drunkenness, madness, every evil, pride, pride, riba sakataya baba. We render you powerless. We render you powerless. We declare. We declare Uganda for Jesus. We declare Abusoka for Jesus. We declare the West for Jesus. The South for Jesus. Central for Jesus. East for Jesus. On this altar. We declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that the wells are opening up. The wells are opening up. Rivers of living water flowing. Rivers of living water flowing. We thank you, Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus upon our declaration. The blood of Jesus upon our intercession. The blood of Jesus upon every prophecy. We decree and declare the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless your God. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands and I pray for you. Father in heaven, these are your children. They have lifted their hand to you as a sign that they can do nothing without you, Holy Spirit. They need you day by day. You are the one we need, the Holy Spirit. You are the gift from heaven. You are the promise of God. Which our Lord and Savior Jesus told us to wait for. That when you come, we shall see power. We need that power. They need that power. Power of wisdom. Power of understanding. Power of might. Power of counsel. Power of knowledge. Power of fear of the Lord. Let the power of God rest upon each of these people in this house. Yes, Lord, let your power rest upon them. Holy Spirit, rest upon them. Let them have a mark of you. Let them hear you. Renew your relationship with each of us, oh God. Renew your relationship with us. 
Give us the power to overcome. Power to overcome. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Let's just give the Lord another big hand clap. We're just so thankful to the Lord for the, his presence. You just feel like you just want to go on and on and on. Thank you so much, Apostle Emma, for sharing with us. Let's give him a hand clap. basically invited him to be with us this entire weekend and so he was traveled yesterday he was did a session yesterday night or evening he's been here for two services and uh, we are going to stick on him without permission so he's with us here for the afternoon session amen amen and we're just so thankful we are really really thankful Amen. Thank you so much, our friends uh, who are visiting the Mayambalas. And I know the Cheyunes have come. Maybe you just stand up and wave to us. And just, hallelujah. Uh, we're grateful that you're here. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. How many people are visiting us for the first time? You've never been in this service. It's your first time. I've seen some faces. Amen. Let's clap for them. You are most, 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 most welcome. Amen. If you have a church, when you go back, please send our love and our regards. But if you don't have a church, uh, this is a good place to belong. Amen. Amen. Ever since I joined this church, my life has not remained the same. And I promise you that your life won't remain the same. Well, today I just want to take the opportunity before we give in the house and then we'll be done to just uh, recognize our dear friend, Pastor Isaac Serukenya. <clears throat> Amen. I, I just felt that the worship time was, was a real bye-bye Bye-bye, COVID. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was just so blessed. Just so blessed. Just so blessed. When I grow up, I want to be like you. Amen. Uh, but uh, Pastor Isaac, most of you know him from Miracle Center. But uh, um, he's here. He's, he has a ministry called Simply Ministry. So simply-ministry.org www.simply-ministry.org Amen. He's been such a blessing and we invited him here to come and lead praise and worship and he was here last week and then he was here very early and he's been with us with our dear friend Philbert uh, on keys and so um, uh, Pastor Isaac is also a leader in the marketplace. The CEO of New Plan something. Praise the Lord. I know that you do sub electrical substations and stuff like that. But he's leading at a very, very high level. Very, very high level. And yet we look up to him as a minister. A true firebrand that has been plucked out of the fire. So I want to give him some five minutes to come and tell us about himself, about his wife and family, and the work that he's doing, and how we can connect with him. So please make him welcome. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good and all the time, and that's just the way he is. Amen. Um, 
Pastor, thank you so much for having me come over. I've been so blessed, and Mama, as well. I wish there is a way I could say it in Lusoga, but may the Lord have mercy on me. I won't go that way. Yeah, in uh, in uh, in one of, uh, of uh, one of Apostle's submissions, he kind of mentioned that you you went to Muiri. You are Muirian. Oh, primary. Okay. Okay, I also have a connection to Busoga because uh, Mwiri was my gateway to Makerere. I went to, <laughs> so I studied S1 to S6 at Makerere College School, and then I repeated S6, and the Lord told me go to Busoga College, Mwiri. And I went there, and uh, from that time, it was A's all the way. <laughs> Amen. So, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful place. That's full on the hill. Glory to God. My name is Pastor Isaac Seru Kenya. Actually, not, I can't, Pastor is not a name, that is a title. But I am Isaac Seru Kenya. We'll just leave it at that. And also, um, I'm married. I'm married to one wife, uh, Janet. She couldn't be here today because she needed to, she needed to minister. Normally, um, I, I can't be omnipresent. Yeah, but... The only way I can be omnipresent is if a part of me is somewhere else. So she's preaching the other side at Simply Ministry. And, uh, and I had to come here. Amen. We have four children. The Lord has blessed us with. My wife and I have been married for 20 years now. This is 20, year 21. Yeah, I, I may look young, but I'm old. Yeah, but the Lord has been good to us. Um, the Lord, um, I was, I got, I got, I gave my life to Christ at uh, Kampala Pentecostal Church in 1987, in those days, and then uh, the Lord moved me from there to Miracle Center in 1990, and then I served at Miracle Center for, um, for, for 30 years, leading, uh, leading the music ministry there, until, until last, towards the end of last year when the Lord told me it's time for you to move. Um, I was fine <laughs> where I was. It's not like somebody was pushing me out, but I actually reasoned with God from that angle. I told him, Mukama, if you thought that I'm not okay where I am, actually the truth is that I am fine. So leave me here. I am okay. But he said, move. And uh, he won the argument. So I went, I spoke with my man of God, Pastor Robert Kayanja, Pastors Robert and Jessica Kayanja. And they, they released me with a blessing. They released me with a blessing. I'll never forget that day. Uh, he also, also the church released me with a blessing and set us on our journey. That was in March. Then uh, on uh, 29th of May, um, the Lord, shortly, I think two weeks before lockdown, then uh, a pastor came and opened where we are currently planted at Simply Ministry. Simply Ministry is in Bunamoaya that side, Namwaya. But when you go on the, on the website and also on the net, you'll be able to get a Google pin that gets you to where we are. But uh, one of the things that is so profound that the Lord is leading us to do in this time as we, are, as we are looking into, we are digging in for a revival like has never been seen before. All of you have heard, you've heard the word, you know exactly, I know you feel it all the way. But there, there is something that the Lord requires of us now in this day and time. This is not the first time we are experiencing revival. There have been revivals before. All of you know that. But the, child, the, pro, the question is, where are they now? Where are they now? They are not here because what was supposed to be, they actually became, they were visitations. You know what a visitation is? When you get a visitor... Someone says, I've come to visit you. You expect that they are going to leave. Right? Nobody comes to visit you and they stay. You know, you, you prepare and you know, okay, this person is going to be here for a while. The revivals that we are supposed to be here, they were supposed to be for the Lord to abide. But instead, they became visitations. In other words, he came, did something here and there, and then a time came and everything just went shh nice and quiet. But in these last days, I strongly believe that the Lord wants to not visit, but he wants to abide. He wants to abide. He wants to abide. He wants to dwell here. 
I was sharing early, earlier, earlier in the service in the morning that, that the intention of, of, the, of the construction of the temple, what we call the temple of Solomon in Second Chronicles chapter 5 and verse 10 to 15, you'll go back and read there, was for the Lord to, was, uh, uh, the temple was being built so that the Lord will come and abide there. That was David's vision. He said that, look, I'm staying in a palace, but my God does not, does not, doesn't have anywhere to stay. So he said, I'm going to build the Lord a temple. But the Lord said, not you, but your son. So Solomon picked it up. Solomon, in all the excellence that you know of him, built the temple. He painted. I don't know whether there was paint in those days, but let's say he painted. He decorated, he put gold, silver, diamonds, rubies, everything that he thought was possible that even he himself had the feeling that with the excellence with which I've done, I've put up this building and I've decorated. There is no way, I'm sure God is in heaven saying, How? but day one passed, nothing happened. He woke up in the morning and the glory of God wasn't in the temple. He said, maybe this thing was not put correctly. He corrected it and said, let's wait. Day two passed, day three passed, nothing. But what happened that created that, uh, that the Lord began, come, came and dwelt was he needed two keys, two keys to make it happen. The first one was that the priests needed to come out of their most holy place and the sanctuary. Uh, you'll go back and read that scripture without keeping to their divisions. You know how the body of Christ right now is whereby we cannot, there, there, are so many, there are so many divisions among us. We hold the same Bible. We subscribe to the same Holy Spirit. We call upon the name of Jesus Christ. We believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We preach the gospel. We, we, we win souls for Christ. But the challenge is that there, you know how the body of Christ is right now. There are places that even you, in your godliness, you know... You, you, you know that you can't go there. But nobody can tell you why. You just know that you're together. You know that there are people that you can't talk to. You don't know why, but you just know that you're not supposed to talk to somebody. You're very quiet, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm. But the, the Lord gave us two entry points. He said, you want a revival and not a visitation? You want a revival that not that of the of or the abiding presence of the Lord and not a visitation. If you want that, there are two things I'm requiring of you. First of all, the priests. I know they are. They've, they've fasted. They've prayed. The priests are the men of God. The apostles, the pastors, the preachers, the evangelists, the teachers, the wherever it is that you're coming from. Everyone that the Lord has called. I know you are believing God. You're fasting. You're in prayer. You're seeking the face of God, but. He's saying that there is something that you want me to come and abide. There, is, there are two things I'm asking of you. First of all, you come out of your most holy place, out of the sanctuary, out of uh, having sanctified yourself without keeping to your divisions. Hmm? I know there are ministers, ministries, ministries have different callings, but the callings that the Lord has placed upon us should not be a reason to create the walls that divide us and prevent us from actually being able to reach out and be a blessing to the ministries around us because that is one of the things that the Lord is requiring of us in these last days that we should rise up out of the divisions where we are, respect the callings where we are, respect the churches where we are coming from, but realize that there is one thing that we are all looking out to is the service of the Lord. And what is a servant? To be a servant is to do exactly what the master has told you to do. That is one key. The second one is that peters and the singers and the instrumentalists and everybody. But even among the instrumentalists, the worship ministers, the worshipers, the guys, the, the teams that we have formed, the worship team, so on, so worship team, so on. So even in those days, there were those of Asaph, there were those of, those of Jedithan, there were those of Haman, and then their sons and their daughters. And it had come to a point whereby it was impossible. It had become so bad, so polarized, like the way it is now, that if there is a challenge in this church, and you know that this, you have weak, we have pranos are strong, and the altos are weak, and the tenors are weak, and then there is another church whereby for them, soprano, alto, and tenor are weak, but the band is up there. The best that we can do is to look at them from a distance, just drive by the church, or walk by the church, or hear them, at a distance, you know some of you, are, some of them are in your neighborhoods. 
Mm. You hear the song, the way they are singing a song, and you hear this, the flatting of the soprano. But you, from this other church, you know very well that you are a soprano and you are in the choir, but you hear it from the other side and you say, ah, can somebody go and help the sopranos in that church? Lord, send them somebody. Mm. But you can't do that. You can't even go there. Why? Because you know that you are of Asaph and they are of Haman. Mm. But just for this once, 2 Chronicles chapter 5, I think around verse 13 there says that, that those of Asaph, those of Haman, those of Jedithan, and their sons and daughters, this thing has become so bad that even the sons, those that came afterwards, all they know is that you cannot go and, and you cannot hear a wrong note in the other church and you go and sit in on their rehearsal and say, excuse me, I know I'm not of this church, I am from the other church across, but there is this note that I heard that you are singing. If you do it like this, you will get it right. Please sing after me. Okay, very good. Now, bye. It has become so bad that even the sons and the daughters have picked it up, but they don't even know where it started from. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, uh huh. That's the right linen. And that's what the scripture was saying. And then they lifted up one voice with one sound, saying that for the Lord is good. Mm. The center of our focus is whom? Is God, is the Lord. And for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. The Bible says that the moment they unlocked the first, the first door and they walked in and then they unlocked the second door among the singers, the Bible says in the last section, I think in verse 14 or 15, it says at that point, that the cloud, the glory of the Lord came and filled the temple. And the temple was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud, because the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. The Lord came and decided to abide in the temple. That is what the Lord is requiring of us now, and I'll end with this, that it is very, very important in these last days for us to be able to lift up one sound and one voice as the body of Christ and say that, look, the truth of the matter is that Jesus is coming soon. Mm, is that Jesus is coming soon. And we have a collective responsibility as the various churches and ministries everywhere to network and build a network that will enable us to create a net. That is why it's called a network. So that everyone that does not know the Lord can come and land in that net without finding a point of weakness to fall through the net onto the ground. We need to form a network that cannot be easily broken. And the only way that you can do that is to respect the ministry of the person across the road, but reach out to them and lift up where they are strong, where they are strong, allow them to come in and help you. And where you are weak, allow them to be, allow yourself to be helped. And then also similarly, reach out and help the other ministry and help them to do better. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So what we are doing at Simply Ministry right now, we are focusing on the Levites. That is where the Lord has, has that's, where, that's where a lot of what we are doing is. We are putting together a choir of 4,000 people for a start. Regardless of where you're coming from, whether you are, whether you are Anglican, Catholic, Pentecostal, Seventh-day Adventist, Orthodox, uh, Muslim, if you dare, anybody that has a heart for worship, whereby you will be able to plug in and will be able to create this net as far as the worship is concerned and make the name of the Lord known all over the face of the earth. So what we are doing is that uh, our pastor talked about the website, uh, www.simply-ministry.org. All you need to do is to go to that website if you are interested, and uh, they, you'll find a, a tab there. The moment you go to the website, it says join the choir. Just click there. There are some details over there. You'll be able to fill them in, and then we'll be able to reach out to you. But anyway, we are, we are, so far we've had, uh, we've had tremendous feedback from different places, and we've only been running for two weeks um, uh, with the choir, just the choir. But, but we, are, we are growing. I'm actually very late to a for a rehearsal now. We, we have rehearsals on Sunday from 2 up to 4 at Simply Ministry in Munamwaya. Then from there, we'll see how to how to expand. Probably we'll have hosting centers in different places. But for now, we are all at Bunamwaya. 
but the Lord has been good to us. We've been, we are still a baby ministry. I don't know how long House of Revival has been here, but we are, I've, also, I've also learned a lot from being here in the few hours that I've been here. And, uh, and I know for sure that the Lord is going to do great and mighty things. For us, we're only seven months old, but the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. So I will end there, but thank you so much, uh, Pastor, for having me. From here, I am going to, I will allow you, I will please request that you allow me to, to run very fast. And I know the other guys are also waiting for me. I, I know that phone is now full of calls. But all is well. All is well. Otherwise, God bless you. Thank you so much for having me. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's just give him another big hand clap. If uh, Pastor Isaac has been a blessing to you and you just want to bless him in whichever way the Lord leads you to, you can reach out to Judith and let her know and uh, we'll pass on the blessing to him. Amen. Let's get a hold of our offerings. Grab a hold of your offering and I'll pray. If you want to give through our MTN channels or Airtel channels, they will be flashed up uh, online so you can give or directly to the bank. Um, amen. Amen. This evening we'll be having our closing session at four and uh, we'll just basically come together to, to pray for you, to commission you and then to break our are fast together. So it's going to be a short session and then we'll have a meal together. So I want to encourage you. Uh, you feel free to stay if you don't have to go. And then if you're going somewhere, feel free to come back. Children are welcome as well. We have a Bible challenge, reading challenge going on. And we hope to be able to read through the Bible at least once before the next encounter, which is in April. So there is a group that you can subscribe to. You can register in the tent and we'll be reading 12 chapters of the Bible daily. All you need is about 45 minutes a day. And so far we have about 60 people who've signed up. So it's powerful. And then uh, if you want to serve in this church in any department, it's very good as a member of a local body to get to serve. And so please register in the tent. Uh, there will be a training in the month of Feb for all those people. And finally, every Thursday we're here for altar from 5.30. We are going to dig in, we're going to pray, and we're going to learn more about altars in this quarter. So please be a part of that. So I'll pray. Father, we thank you for our offering. We thank you for your children that have come out here today. We thank you for this service. Lord, we thank you for the presence that covers us. Will you bless those who have brought their tithes? Will you bless those who have brought their offerings, the free will offerings, the love offerings? Will you open to them the windows of heaven? Will you pour out a blessing that they will not have room enough to keep it? Will you meet them at their point of need? Glorify your name in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the baskets will come around very shortly. And uh, feel free to just drop in your offering. I'll give you a minute and then we'll share in the words of the grace. Have you been blessed? Hallelujah.
And I exalt your holy name. Exalt your holy name. Ah, exalt your holy name, O oh Lord. Please rise up and let's share in the words of the grace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Say hello to somebody. Let's meet at four, four to six, and we'll be closing. God bless you so much.